The Apostolic Chancery Latin, Cancellaria Apostolica, also known as the Papal or Roman Chank L. Uri, was a dicastery of the Roman Curia at the service of the Supreme Pontiff of the Roman Catholic Church. The principal and presiding official was the Cardinal Chancellor of Holy Roman Church who was always Cardinal Priest of the Basilica di San Lorenzo in Damaso. The original, principal function of the office was to collect money to maintain the papal army. Pope Pius VII reformed the office when Emperor Napoleon I of France obviated the need for papal armies. In the early 20th century the office collected money for missionary work. Pope Paul VI abrogated the Cancellaria Apostolica on 27 February 1973. Its obligations were transferred to the Secretariat of State. History Topic. Topic. To 1908 Topic. The Cancellaria Apostolica was of ancient origin in its essence, but it derived its name from that of civil chanceries, including that of the imperial chancery. The primacy of the Supreme Pontiff required that he have in his service officials to write and transmit his answers to the numerous petitions for favors and consultations addressed to him. Throughout its duration the office was reformed numerous times. The Apostolic Constitution ETSI ad singula of Pope Clement VII of 5 July 1532 provided the cardinalatial title of the Basilica di San Lorenzo in Damaso to the Chancellor. After Pope Martin V had instituted a large number of offices in the Cancellaria, Pope Sixtus V placed many of them in the class of vocaboli i.e., venal offices a practice also of secular courts, e.g. those of France, even under the absolutist King Louis XIV. The reclassification of many of the offices of the Cancellaria as vocaboli was motivated by the need of the Pope for money. The Pope was often compelled to defend the Church by waging war, equipping martial expeditions, or at least financially assisting the princes who waged such wars at his exhortation, but the papal treasury was often insufficient to defray even the expenses of the papal states. Accordingly, the Popes resorted to the expedient of selling several lucrative offices of the Roman Curia to the highest bidder, however, these sales were not of the offices per se, but of the receipts of the offices, e g. the taxes paid for the favors that were granted through the pertinent office. Some of the offices that Pope Sixtus V classified as vocaboli were of minor importance and therefore did not require special competence were sold with a grant of the right of succession to the heirs of the purchaser. Offices that entailed grave obligations and for which only pious and learned men were eligible were sold without this right and therefore reverted to the Roman Curia on the death of the purchaser. An aleatory contract, therefore, was formed, its uncertainties being the amount of the income of the office and the length of the life of the purchaser. The prices of the offices, especially of the more desirable ones, were considerable. Lorenzo Cursini, afterwards Pope Clement XII, bought the office of regent of the Cancellaria for 30,000 Roman scudi, a large fortune at the time. The disadvantage of these uncertainties might not be confined to the purchaser because he was free to condition the purchased office on the life of another designated person, named the intestatary. The purchaser was also permitted to substitute a different intestatary if this substitution was expressed 40 days before the death of the immediately preceding intestatary. Other offices that Pope Sixtus V classified as vocaboli were of greater importance, including that of regent and those of the 25 solicitors, 12 notaries, and auditors of the causes of the Holy Palace. Pope Sixtus V assigned the liberal proceeds of these sales as part of the remuneration of the Cardinal Vice-Chancellor of the Cancellaria see below, but later Pope Innocent XI rescinded them and assigned the revenue to the Apostolic Camera. Pope Alexander VIII restored the revenue to the vice-chancellor, who at that time was his nephew, Pietro Odoboni. The authority of the vice-chancellor increased when in 1690 Pope Alexander VIII added to his office that of compiler in perpetuity. The government of Emperor Napoleon I of France redeemed many of the vocaboli, which resulted in few remaining. Pope Pius VII, after his return to Rome, reformed the Cancellaria and prudently decreased its offices. But as he granted to the vocaboli the privilege that, by a legal fiction, time of their tenures was regarded as not having transpired, quad tempus et tempora non current, 
and many proprietors of vocabulary having had obtained grants of sopravivevza, by which deceased intestataries were regarded to be alive, some offices remained vocabulary nominally, but not factually. Finally, in 1901 Pope Leo XIII abrogated all the vocabulary offices and ordered his protetary to redeem them, when necessary substituting the office of the apostolic datary for their proprietors. 1908–1917 the Apostolic Constitution Sapienti Concilio of Pope Pius X of 29 June 1908 reduced the Cancellaria Apostolica to a forwarding office Ufficio di Spedizioni consisting only of the Cardinal Chancellor, Regent, Apostolic Prothonotaries, a notary, a secretary and archivist, a protocolist, and four amanuenses. The preponderance of the minor offices of the Cancellaria were abrogated and its faculties were reduced only to the expedition of papal bulls for consistorial benefices, erection of new dioceses and chapters, and other more important ecclesiastical affairs that required various forms of apostolic letters. Thus Pius X restored the title of "'Chancellor of Holy Roman Church' from the previous "'Vice-Chancellor' The cardinalatial title of the Chancellor remained the Basilica di San Lorenzo in Damaso, as it had been since 5 July 1532. However, the Chancellor retained little of his former authority. He acted as notary of the cardinalatial consistories and directed the office of the Cancellaria Apostolica. Finally, the motu proprio quo aptius of Pope Paul VI of 27 February 1973 completely abrogated the Cancellaria Apostolica. Office of Chancellor Title of the office Prior to the Apostolic Constitution ETSI ad singula of Pope Clement VII of 5 July 1532, the presiding cardinal of the Cancellaria was titled, Vice-Chancellor. Scholars writing of the Cancellaria provided many ingenious reasons why that dignitary did not have the more obvious title of Chancellor. The Italian jurist Giovanni Battista Cardinal De Luca regarded these explanations as senseless simplicitates et fabuli and proposed an explanation of his own, without insisting on its correctness. It was probable that the title of Vice Chancellor arose in the same way as the title of Protetary. Protetarius the custom having been to title the principle of the dataria apostolica the datary, datarius, if he were not a cardinal, and the protetary, protetarius, if he were. The rationale for the titular customs of the dataria was that the office of datary was not in essence cardinalatial but rather of minor dignity, wherefore it was improper to entitle a cardinal with datary. The same custom still obtains in the case of an apostolic nuncio who is elevated to the cardinalate, he retains his office for a time, but with the title of pro nuncio. This theory of De Luca is not certain, but is at least probable. ETSI ad singula prescribed that the principal of the cancellaria be titled chancellor, which was proper because the office had been occupied for centuries by cardinals. For the rest, the office in question was always regarded as one of the most dignified and important of the Roman Curia, as is evident from Moroni's account of the funeral of Cardinal Alexander Farnese, vice-chancellor and archpriest of the Basilica di San Pietro in Vaticano. <inaudible> Residence and titular basilica the most splendid occupant of the office of Chancellor was the future Pope Leo X, who received as residence from his successor Pope Clement VII the Palazzo Riario, long known as the Cancellaria Apostolica, where he remained. His former residence was in the Palazzo Borgia, from which he moved to the Palazzo Sforza Cesarini, the latter palace being, on this account, long known as the Cancellaria Vecchia. The removal of the residence and office of the vice-chancellor to the majestic Palazzo Riario in the Campo di Fiori was due to the confiscation of the property of Cardinal Raphael Riario for his share, with Cardinals Petrucci, Sacchi, Soderini, and Castellesi, in a conspiracy against the life of Pope Leo X. Contiguous to the Cancellaria qua edifice, in fact forming part of it, is the Basilica di San Lorenzo in Damaso. 
When Pope Clement VII assigned this palace as the perpetual residence of the vice-chancellor, he provided that the vice-chancellor should always have the title of the basilica, as the chancellors were not always of the same order in the sacred college, being either cardinal deacons, cardinal priests, or cardinal bishops, this basilica could not follow the rule of the other cardinalitial titular churches that had the fixed grade of titular, a church over which a cardinal of the order of priests was placed, or deaconry a church over which was placed a cardinal deacon. The basilica, on the contrary, became a titular for a chancellor of the order of priests and a deaconry for one of the order of deacons. When the chancellor was a suburbicarian bishop, he retained the basilica in commendum. <laughs> <laughs> Office of regent the office of regent, the next office in the order of precedence of the Cancellaria Apostolica after that of the Chancellor, was instituted in 1377, when Pope Gregory XI returned from Avignon, France to his see. Cardinal Pierre de Monterey, the Chancellor at that time, refused to follow the Pope from Avignon to Rome, as it was necessary that someone should direct the office of the Cancellaria. The Pope, leaving the title of Vice Chancellor to Montiroc, appointed the Archbishop of Ban, Bartolomeo Prignano, as regent. At the death of Pope Gregory XI in 1378, Prignano was elected Pope, and he appointed a successor to himself in the office of regent, which was thereafter maintained, even when the vice-chancellor re-established his residence in Rome. <laughs> Modes of issuance of papal bulls there were four modes of issuing papal bulls, by way of the Roman Curia per viam curiae, by way of the Cancellaria per Cancellarium, secretly per viam secretam, and by way of the Apostolic Camera per viam Camerae, because while some bulls were taxed, others were not, and it was necessary to determine upon what bulls the proprietors of the vocabulary offices see above had a right to receive taxes. Thus papal bulls concerning the government of the Roman Catholic Church, being exempt from all taxation, were said to be issued by way of the Roman Curia, those of which the expedition was by way of the Cancellaria were the common bulls, which, after being reviewed by the abbreviators of the Greater Presidency, were signed by them and by the proprietors of the vocabulary, the latter of whom received the established taxes, the bulls said to be issued secretly were those in favor of some privileged persons, e. g. The Palatine prelates, auditors of the Sacra Rota, and relatives of cardinals, and were signed by the vice chancellor, also exempt from taxation. Finally, the bulls of which the expedition was said to be by way of the Apostolic Camera were those that concerned it. Because the style and the rules of the Cancellaria could not be adapted to these bulls, they were issued by the Samista, whose office Pope Alexander VI instituted and later united by Pope Alexander VIII with that of the vice chancellor. See above. After Pope Leo XIII abrogated all the vocabulary in 1901, the aforementioned modes of expedition ceased. A little later, the Apostolic Constitution Sapienti Concilio of Pope Pius X of 29 June 1908 provided that all bulls be issued through the Cancellaria, by order of the Congregation of the Consistory for all matters of its competency and by order of the Pope for all others, in keeping with the new organization of the Cancellaria as merely an issuing office. Sapienti Concilio, further provided that the ancient formulae of papal bulls be modified, and a commission of cardinals consisting of the Chancellor, the Apostolic Datary, and the Secretary of the Congregation of the Consistory was charged with the preparation of new ones. This commission having reformed the bulls for consistorial benefices, Pius X by a motu proprio of 8 December 1910 approved the new formulae and ordered them to be used exclusively after 1 January 1911. The College of the Abbreviators of the Greater Presidency having been suppressed and the Abbreviators of the Lesser Presidency having become extinct in fact, the Apostolic Prothonotaries in actual office were appointed to sign the bulls. The mode of dating papal bulls was also changed. Formerly they were dated according to the year of the Incarnation, which year begins on 25 March, the Solemnity of the Annunciation, which liturgically celebrates the conception of Jesus Christ. This medieval mode of dating remained peculiar to papal bulls, and over time caused much confusion. Pius X ordered that in the future these documents had to be dated according to the secular calendar year that begins on 1 January. Governing rules <laughs> 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 
The rules of the Cancellaria were instituted in various apostolic constitutions that the popes customarily promulgated at the beginning of their pontificates regarding judicial causes and benefices. In many cases the pope merely confirmed the provisions of his predecessor, but in others added or suppressed provisions. The result was an ancient collection of rules in force, and this mode of governing the Cancellaria continued even after Pope Pius X reformed the Roman Curia. These rules were usually divided into three classes, rules of direction or expedition that regarded the expedition of papal bulls, beneficial or reservatory rules that regarded benefices and reservations, and judicial rules that regarded specific prescriptions for judicial matters, especially appeals. The rules of the Cancellaria had the force of law unless exception was made by a concordat. In ancient times, these rules lost their force on the death of the Pope, and revived only upon the express confirmation of his successor, but Pope Urban VIII declared that without an express confirmation the rules of the Cancellaria were restored to validity on the day after the election of the succeeding Pope. The commission of cardinals responsible for the reformation of the formulae of papal bulls was responsible also for revising the rules of the Cancellaria. Topic. Chancellors of Holy Roman Church, 1088–1187 Note, some chancellors before 1144 used the ancient title, Bibliothecarius, instead of Cancellarius. This office should not be confused with that of the Cardinal Camerlengo of Holy Roman Church, which is a cardinalatial office with competence regarding the vacancy of the Apostolic See. Giovanni de Catani, Pope Gelasius II, 1088 to 1118. Crisogono Malcandini, 1118 to 22. Emeric de Borgon, 1123 to 41. Gerardo Caccianemici, Pope Lucius II, 1141 to 4. Baronio, Pro Chancellor, 1144 to 5. Robert Pullen, 1145 to 6. Guido da Vico, 1146 to 9. Boso Brakespear, Pro Chancellor, 1149 to 53. Rolando Bandinelli, Pope Alexander III, 1153 to 9. Ermano, Pro Chancellor, 1159 to 66. Gerardo, Pro Chancellor, 1166 to 8. Graziano da Pisa, Pro Chancellor, 1168 to 78. Alberto di Mora, Pope Gregory the Eighth, eleven seventy eight to eighty seven. Topic Vice Chancellors of the Holy Roman Church, eleven eighty seven to nineteen oh eight. Topic Moises, eleven eighty seven to eleven ninety one. Egidio Pierleoni, eleven ninety one to eleven ninety four. Sencio Camerario, Pope Honorius the Third, eleven ninety four to eleven ninety eight. Reynaldo di Sorenza, eleven ninety eight to twelve hundred. Biagio di Porto Torres, twelve hundred to twelve o three. Giovanni da Ferentino, twelve o three to twelve o five. Giovanni dei Conti di Segni, Chancellor, twelve o five to twelve thirteen. Reynaldo Magalona, twelve thirteen to twelve fourteen. Tommaso da Capua, 1215 to 1216. Rainiero, 1216 to 19. William of Modena, 1219 to 1222. Guido, 1222 to 6. Cinibaldo Fieschi, Pope Innocent IV, 1226 to 7. Martino of Sens, 1227 to 32. Bartolomeo, 1232 to 1235. Guglielmo, 1235 to 1238. Giacomo Boncampio, 1239 to 1244. Marinus de Ebola, 1244 to 1252. Guglielmo di Cadedego, 1252 to 1256. Reynaldo Maestro, 1256 to 1257. Giordano Peranti, 1257 to 1262. Michel di Toulouse, 1262 c. 1271. Giovanni Lecacorno, 1272 to 1273. Lanfranco di Bergamo, 1273 to 1276. Pietro Perigrosi, 1276 to 1288. Jean Lemoine, 1288 to 1294. 
Giovanni Castrocelli, 1294 to 1295. Pietro Valeriano de Rigera, 1295 to 1296. Riccardo Petroni, 1296 to 1300. Pietro Valeriano de Rigera again, 1300 to 1301. Papinianus della Rovere, 1301 c. 1305. Pierre Arnaud de Payan, 1305 to 1306. Petrus de Podio, 1306 to 1307. Arnaud Nouvel, 1307 to 1316. Gosselin de Jean, 1316 to 1319. Pierre Le Tessier, 1319 to 1325. Pierre Despers, 1325 to 1361. Pierre de Monteric, 1361 to 1385. Francesco Moricotti Prignano, 1385 to 1394. Vacant 1394 to 1405. Angelo Axioli, 1405 to 1408. Jean de Brogni, 1409 to 1426. Vacant 1426 to 36. Jean de la Rochetale, 1436 to 1437. Francesco Condomer, 1437 to 1453. Vacant 1453 to 7. Rodrigo Lanzal Borja y Borja, Pope Alexander VI, 1457 to 1492. Escanio Maria Sforza Visconti, 1492 to 1505. Galeotto Franciati della Rovere, 1505 to 1507. Sisto Guerra della Rovere, 1507 to 1517. Giulio de Medici, Pope Clement VII, 1517 to 1523. Pompeo Colonna, 1524 to 1532. Ippolito de Medici, 1532 to 1535. Alessandro Farnese, 1535 to 1589. Alessandro Damasini Peretti di Montalto 1589 to 1623 Ludovico Ludovici 1623 to 1632 Francesco Barberini 1632 to 1679 Vacant 1679 to 89 Pietro Odoboni 1689 to 1740 Tommaso Ruffo 1740 to 1753 Girolamo Colonna di Ciara, seventeen fifty three to seventeen fifty six Alberico Archinto, seventeen fifty six to seventeen fifty eight Carlo Resinico, seventeen fifty eight to seventeen sixty three Henry Benedict Stewart of York, seventeen sixty three to eighteen o seven Francesco Carafa di Tredo, eighteen o seven to eighteen eighteen Giulio Maria della Somalia, eighteen eighteen to eighteen thirty Tommaso Arezzo, eighteen thirty to eighteen thirty three Carlo Odescalchi, eighteen thirty three to eighteen thirty four Carlo Maria Pedicini, eighteen thirty four to eighteen forty three Tommaso Bernetti, eighteen forty four to eighteen fifty two Luigi Amat di San Filippo e Sorso, eighteen fifty two to eighteen seventy eight Antonio Severio de Luca, eighteen seventy eight to eighteen eighty three Teodolfo Myrtle, eighteen eighty four to eighteen ninety nine Lucido Parocchi, eighteen ninety nine to nineteen o three Antonio Agliardi, nineteen o three to nineteen o eight Topic Chancellors of Holy Roman Church, nineteen o eight to nineteen seventy three Topic Antonio Agliardi, nineteen o eight to nineteen fifteen Ottavio Caggiano de Azevedo, nineteen fifteen to nineteen twenty seven Andreas Franz Fruworth, nineteen twenty seven to nineteen thirty three Tommaso Pio Baggiani, nineteen thirty three to nineteen forty two Celso Benigno Luigi Costantini, nineteen fifty four to nineteen fifty eight Santiago Capello, nineteen fifty nine to nineteen sixty seven Luigi Tralia, nineteen sixty eight to nineteen seventy three. Topic See also Topic Papal Diplomatics Topic References 
Topic. Topic. Sources. Topic. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Herbermann, Charles, ed. 1913. Article name needed. Catholic Encyclopedia. New York, Robert Appleton. 1. The Cardinals of the Holy Roman Church, Apostolic Chancery Gaetano Moroni, Dizionario di Eredizioni Storico Ecclesiastica da S. Pietro Sino i Nostri Giorni Harry Breslau, Hans Walter Kluitz, Handbuch der Erkendenlehre für Deutschland und Italien, 1969. 